Hello everyone. Welcome you all to the course Mathematics and Statistics 3 pertaining to your BTEC third semester syllabus. Myself Dr. Sharmishta Ghosh from IM Kolkata and I shall be presenting you the first module of that course that is multivariate calculus the integration part. Now before entering into the details of the syllabus and the course content let us take a quick review of what is calculus. I'm sure every one of you know it but still once more. So calculus can be defined as a branch of mathematics that deals with variables and explores how the variables change by looking at them in infinitely small pieces called infinitesimals. I hope you all remember that the word limit comes in as we deal with infinitesimal quantities in calculus. And we also recapitulate that calculus, the way it is practiced today, was invented in the 17th century independently by two famous scientists. One is Sir Isaac Newton and the other one is Gottfried Leibniz. And this calculus provides us a framework for modeling systems in which there is change and also gives us a way to deduce the predictions of such models. And this basically makes calculus so important for us because in nature, things are changing in every instant. There are instantaneous changes and therefore calculus helps us to model such changes. Okay, now what are the branches of calculus? I hope all of you remember there are two important branches of calculus. First one is the differential calculus and the other one is the integral calculus. So in brief, what is differential calculus? In differential calculus, we concerned with differentiation of functions of one or more variables and geometrically or physically we deal with instantaneous rates of changes and slopes of curves. And what is integral calculus? Integral calculus deals with integration of functions of one or more variables. And here we are concerned with accumulation of quantities and areas under or between curves and many more things. Now, as you see, both in case of differential and integral calculus, we are talking about functions of one or more variables. And this again gives a classification of calculus as single variable calculus and multivariable calculus. So single variable calculus, as the name suggests, we can easily guess that it is the calculus that involves functions of single variable of the form y equal to fx. And this is what you all have learned in your class 2 level. And what is the other one? Multivariable calculus. This one deals with functions of more than one variable, which we call as multivariable functions. So they can be functions of two variables of the form z equal to f of xy, or we can have functions of three variables of the form w equal to function of x, y, z, three independent variables. And in the most general case, w may be a function of n independent variables, x1, x2 to xn. Now you remember at the beginning only, we have told that we will be dealing in this course with multivariable calculus. So this is what we will be dealing with, functions of these types z equal to fxy or w equal to f of xyz. We will not go into the general case of n variables. And also remember that we will be actually talking only about integration in this course. The multivariable differentiation you have already learned in your first year. So before we enter into again multivariable integration, let us take a quick overview of the concepts of integration. And again, we remember that integration has two viewpoints. One is the inverse process of differentiation, whereas in the other one, 
we consider it as a certain summation as the limit of a sum. And these two viewpoints of integration are integrated by the fundamental theorem of integral calculus. Now we will not go much into details of the entire concept, but let us have a look of what do we mean by the integral a to b fx dx and a geometrical interpretation of this. Now this is something you have already learned in your plus two level, but understanding of this once more will help us to extend the idea to multivariable integration. So let us first have this figure over here where y equal to fx is plotted here, the function, and we are integrating the function over the interval as x varies from x equal to a to x equal to b. Now let us subdivide the interval a, b into n equal parts by the points x0 which is a itself, x1, x2, xr, xr minus 1, xn equal to b. And say that the length of each interval is h. So therefore h will be actually given by length of the interval b minus a divided by n. Okay, now let us form the sum h multiplied with fx0 plus fx1 plus dots plus f of x and minus 1. So what is this? Basically f of x0 say this is the height of this function and h is the length of the interval or otherwise then h of x0 basically gives you the area of this rectangle. Like if we come here, the area of this rectangle a, b, l, c will be basically given by h and the height here is a, c, a of x, r minus 1. Okay, now what is done is we assume that the number of intervals n become indefinitely large or otherwise we say n tends to infinity. Now if the number of intervals tend to infinity then of course h the length of the interval will tend to zero. So now we take the limit we form the limit h tends to zero h multiplied with the summation f of xr r equal to zero to n minus one. So basically this sum we have written here in the summation notation and we take the limit h tends to 0. This only de defines our integral a to b fx dx or in an alternate notation we can also write it as limit n tends to infinity b minus a by n and with the same summation. So this is the mathematical definition of your definite integral a to b fx dx. And what does it actually mean? What is the purpose of taking this limit and what it is actually giving us? Now, please see once again, as I have already discussed, this a of x r minus 1 multiplied with h, this gives the area of the rectangle. And the area under the curve in this portion, this will be this one. So what is the error over here? This is this one here, the CDL. But now if we make the number of subdivisions go to infinity or then h tends to 0. So therefore the area of the rectangle under the limit will coincide with the area under the curve. And now if we sum all such rectangles which is our integral a to b fx dx this therefore gives you nothing but the area under the curve y equal to fx and the x-axis and the ordinates at x equal to a, x equal to b. So it this gives this entire area. Okay, so with this understanding, we will proceed now to multivariate integration, which is actually the syllabus of this course. So we will be studying double integrals and triple integrals. So what are this? We'll just tell now in brief and in details we will go in the later lecture. So double integrals are concerned with functions of two variables of the form z equal to fxy 
and tells with integrals of the type fx y dx dy or double integral again fx y dx dy over some region r where we should remember r is a region on the xy plane why for that remember what was a to b fx dx there we were integrating with respect to x over the interval a b and now we will be integrating over a region r on the xy plane because dx is an elementary length in the x direction dy is an elementary length in the y direction so dx dy gives an elementary area and therefore as we take the limit of the sum it will give us a uh, area in the xy plane now the details of course we will see in the next lecture and now we can easily guess what will be triple integrals they will be dealing with functions of the type f of x y z so functions of three variables and they will be concerned with integrals of the type f of x y z dx dy dz or like here f of x y z dx dy dz over some region r but now remember that it's not the same as before it will be a three dimensional region in the three dimensional x y z space okay so just a glance of the course contents of this first module so of course we will be first dealing with double integrals understanding the double integrals and how to evaluate double integrals and then we will look into their applications in finding area volume center of mass and gravity next we will move on to triple integrals and also look into the applications in finding volume also there's one more thing in this module that is integration of vector functions vector integration and vector integration will consist of this subtopics as line integrals that means integrating along a curve surface integrals integrating along a surface and some related theorems of green gauss and stokes and lastly before we close down today's lecture so we can see that then from this module what we will learn we will learn how to evaluate multiple integrals and their applications to different geometrical and physical problems and finally the books you will consult for this module the textbooks are higher engineering mathematics by b s grewal this is some well known book to you which you have already seen in your first year courses and engineering mathematics volume 2b by b basumalik and prisanu deyasi our own im professors we have also listed some reference books as advanced engineering mathematics by michel greenberg jain and ayanger h k das okay so with this i will close today's session thank you very much for your patient hearing and in the next class we will understand double integrals in details goodbye till then